primary books. This is for the A-level syllabus. Now in this video, I will explain the cash receipt journal and the payment journal. Before doing the receipts journal and the payment journal, I want you to explain the accounting process. Now, when it comes to the accounting process, you have to have a document to record it in accounts. So that document is called the source document. By using this document, we have to prepare primary books. Now, according to your syllabus, you have to learn eight primary books. So with that eight primary books, you, there are eight documents you have to remember. So the first basic document is a receipt or the deposit slip. By taking those information, we are making cash receipt journal. Next, payment voucher or the counter file. What is a counter file? When you use, when you use a checkbook, after tearing that check, there is a remaining part in your checkbook that's called the counter file. So that is a document to whom you have made the payment for what reason that you have made the payment. By using those information, we are making cash payment journal. Next is a petty cash payment voucher. Petty cash is small payments. So when it comes to a business, there is a main cashier as well as a petty cashier. So petty cashier works with the petty cash transactions. So we have to prepare petty cash payment journal. Next, it's a purchase invoice. When you buy some goods on credit, you have to put it into the purchase invoice. From that, we are making purchase journal. Next, it's a debit note, purchase return journal, whatever the credit purchases that you have bought, if you want to return it, you have to put it into a purchase return journal. Then the sales invoice, all the credit sales, we have to record it there. The primary book is the sales journal. Next, it's a credit note for the sales return journal. The last is general journal and the basic document name is journal voucher. So after putting into the prime entry book, you had put all these entries into ledger accounts. Then by looking at the ledger accounts, we are making the trial balance. By looking at the trial balance, we make financial statements statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position. So that is the accounting process. Now I will explain the first two prime entry books, cash receipt journal and cash payment journal. Now remember when you are doing a business, you have to do two assumptions. One is whenever you receive money or checks, at that moment, you are going to the bank and deposit it. That is first assumption. The second one is whenever you are making a payment, you are using checks. So with those two assumptions, we have to make cash receipt journal and the cash payment journal. Here is a question. Before that, I will show you the format of the cash receipt journal. Now, this is simple cash receipt journal without discount, without VAT. Date, description, value. Then there are four analysis columns, sales, debtors, incomes, and other. Just like the same way we had to make the payment journal, but instead of sales, we had to write purchases, creditors, expenses, and other. Let's go through one by one transaction. Capital introduced 75,000. As a business, the owner has invested money. So you are receiving money. Cash receipt journal. 
one three capital seventy five thousand at the same time put it into the analysis column. It's not sales, debtors, income. That entry you have to put it under other column. Credit sales fifteen thousand. It's credit sales. You have sold some stock on credit that you can't put it into the receipt journal. That is why think of the double entry. It's debtors debit fifteen thousand, sales credit fifteen thousand. Cash drawings. The owner has taken money from the business payment journal. Drawing seven thousand five hundred, and to the other column because we can't put it under purchasers, creditors, or expense. It's not an expense; it's a capital reduction. So that's why we have to put it under other column. Cash purchases five thousand payment journal, and you have to put it under purchase column. Bought furniture twelve thousand, payment journal, furniture. It's a non-current asset. You have to put it under other column. Cash received from debtors ten thousand, receipt journal. At the same time, debtors column. Credit purchases twelve thousand five hundred. Again, it's credit purchases. You can't put it into the payment journal. Think of the double entry. Purchases debit twelve thousand five hundred. Creditor control credit twelve thousand five hundred. Paid rent five thousand payment journal, rent five thousand expense column five thousand, cash paid to creditors seven thousand five hundred payment journal, and to the creditor column. Received commission ten thousand five hundred receipt journal. Commission received is an income, so you have to put it under income column. Paid salaries fifteen five hundred payment journal, and to the expense column. Obtain a bank loan fifty five thousand. Receipt journal we are writing bank loan since it's a non current liability. We have put it under other column. Cash sales twenty thousand receipt journal twenty thousand under sales column introduced an additional capital thirty five thousand receipt journal at the same time other column repaid bank loan thirty thousand it's a payment journal entry thirty thousand and to the other column after entering everything. We have to get the vertical addition. So sales twenty thousand is the double line value. Debtors ten thousand. Incomes ten thousand five hundred. Other column hundred and sixty five thousand. So get the value also. Either you can get the horizontal or vertical addition. You get the same amount. Then we have to think of the double entry. This is total cash sales. So, what's the double entry? Cash control account debit twenty thousand. Cash control account debit twenty thousand. Sales account credit twenty thousand. Remember, cash receipt journal and the payment journal are prime entry book. You have to open up a T account called cash control. The total amount you receive from debtors ten thousand. Think of the double entry: cash control debit ten thousand, debtor control credit ten thousand. The total of income column is ten thousand five hundred. 
cash control debit 10,500. When it comes to income column, you have to check which income is that. Now, according to this question, there's only one income called commission. So you have to open up a T account called commission. There you have to put it on the credit side, 10,500 as cash. The total of other column is 165,000, cash control debit 165,000 as other. And you have to check the, which accounts you have to enter the relevant values. Capital is credit. You have to open up a new account called Capital. Credit 75,000. Bank loan 55,000. Open up a new account called Bank loan and credit that amount. At the same time, again, there's a capital amount of 35,000. Put it into the same capital account. Then let's go to the payment journal. Just like the previous, we had to get the vertical addition. So this is the total cash purchases. The double entry is cash control credit purchases account debit. Total of creditors column is 7,500. Cash control credit 7,500. Creditor control debit 7,500. The total of expenses 20,500. Cash control credit 2,500. Then we have to put it into separate accounts. So under expenses, there are two expenses called rent and salaries. We had to open two separate accounts. Rent debit five thousand, salaries debit fifteen five hundred. The total of other forty nine five hundred cash control credit, and at the same time, drawings we have to open up a new account, furniture and bank loan, there's an account for bank loan, we had to put it on the debit side. Drawings debit 7,500 as cash, furniture debit 12,000 as cash, bank loan debit 30,000 as cash. Then we have to balance our T accounts. Then we have to learn about discount. Discount is from a particular price. Some percentage is deducted. That's called the discount. So here we can divide the discount into two, trade discount and cash discount. The meaning of trade discount is from the selling price, if they have deducted a percentage, that's called the trade discount. For example, you are going to buy something in bulk. So at that moment, if they are deducting a discount, that's called the trade discount. The meaning of cash discount is when you are settling cash, at that moment, if they are deducting a discount, that's called the cash discount. If they are deducting a percentage, that's called it cash discount. So the cash discount, we are going to divide into two again. Discount allowed and discount received. Remember, as a business, you have allowed the discount to a debtor. 
discount received you have received a discount from a creditor so though it is a cash discount the two accounts are discount allowed and debtors so the double entry for the discount allowed is debit discount allowed credit debtors control discount allowed is an expense for the business that's why it's a debit entry debtor control credit because the asset goes down. The data will go down. Discount received double entry is debit creditor control because liability goes down. Credit discount received because it's an income. So remember discount allowed and discount received, you never get an entry called the word cash. But Discount allowed and discount received, we have put it into our receipts and payment journal. Cash receipt journal, just before the value column, we had to open up another column called discount allowed. In the payment journal, just before the value column, we had to open up another column called discount received. Just to show that there is a discount, but remember, when you think of the double entry, there's no cash entry. Now here, I want to explain one more thing that is about the ledger. When it comes to ledger, ledger can be divided into two, general ledger and subsidiary ledger. Ledger can be divided into two, ledger means the collection of T accounts. So that ledger can be divided into two, general ledger and subsidiary ledger. Subsidiary, again, we are going to divide into two, debtor's ledger and creditor's ledger. So in the debtor's ledger, we open individual debtor accounts. In the debtor's ledger, we open individual debtor accounts. In under creditor's ledger, we open up individual creditor accounts. For example, we'll say there are two debtors called Amal Nimal. So under the heading called debtor's ledger, we are opening two ledgers called Amal Nimal. Again, we'll think and there are two creditors called Sandun and Nuan. So under the heading called creditor's ledger, we are opening two T accounts, Sandun and Nuan. So remember, under the heading called debtor's ledger, we maintain all the individual debtor accounts. Under the heading called creditor's ledger, we maintain all the individual creditor accounts. So those comes under subsidiary. When it comes to general ledger, under this, we have to open all our T accounts, including cash control, debtors control, and creditors control. The meaning control is the total. So under the debtors ledger, we have entered individual. The collective value we are putting under the control account, debtors control. So in under general ledger, we have to open all T accounts including cash control, data control, and creditor control. When you're looking at this question, here you get credit sales to Sugat. Sugat is a debtor. Again, credit sales to Amal. Amal is a debtor. Credit purchases from Kirti. Kirti is a creditor. So here, Apart from the cash receipt journal, now here you get the discount allowed column. Cash payment journal, you get the discount received. We have to open debtor's ledger. Under that, you have to open Sugat's account and Amal's account. Under the heading creditor's ledger, we have to open Kirti's account. When it comes to a general ledger, we have to open all our T accounts, including cash control, debtors control, and creditors control. 
let's see how to do this question cash balance 12000 at the beginning of this month there was a balance of 12 go to your receipt journal sorry cash control account debit side df 12000 cash purchases 2000 payment journal purchases 2000 at the same time to the purchases column credit sales to sugat 5000 now when you sold some goods to sugat now these credit sales credit purchases you have to put it into a prime entry book but in this video i'm not going to teach you that part so think of the double entry when you sold some goods to sugat sales credit sugat's account debit so sugat's account is under the heading called debtors ledger we are entering 5000 as sales paid electricity 500 payment journal and to the expense column cash sales 8000 receipt journal at the same time to the sales column after deducting a 10% discount receive 4500 from sugat after deducting this 10% is out of 110 that's called the 10 percent so they have deducted 10 percent discount and got 4500 4500 is for 90 what's the value for 10 that is your discount after deducting so from 100 when they have deduct 10 ultimately the value is 90 so this 4500 you got it for 90 when you multiply it by 10 you get the discount so we have to put the date 95 Sugat, discount LR 500. The value you received is 4,500. At the same time to the debtor column, 4,500. Credit sales to Amal 1,300. Go to your debtor's ledger. Amal, you have to put it onto the debit side, 1,300 as sales. Credit purchases from Kirti, go to Kirti's account under creditor's ledger. Onto the credit side, we are writing purchases 2,500. Cash purchases 1,500. Payment journal. At the same time, purchases column. After deducting a 10% discount, paid cash to Kirti, how much is Kirti's value? 2,500 into 10% is 250. You paid cash. Payment journal, we are writing Kirti. The discount is 250. So actually you have paid only 2,250. Creditor column, 2,250. So this value, you have to put it into Kirti's account as well. Kirti debit, cash 2250 and DR 250. So here Sugat's value also the same. We have to put it into Sugat's account. Credit side cash 4,500 and discount the law 500. Cash received from Amal 1050 to settle his account. So his amount is 1300. We have received only 1050. So here we receive money from Amal. Cash receipt journal Amal. Discount receipt allowed 250. The value is 1050. The data column 1050. At the same time, we had to put it into Amal's account. Cash 1050 and discount allowed 250. 
paid salary is 500 payment journal at the same time to the expense column cash drawings 550 payment journal we had write drawings 550 at the same time to the other column cash sales 10000 receipt journal and to the sales column after entering everything, now according to this question, no incomes, no other column. Get the vertical addition. The double entry for discount allowed is discount allowed debit, debtor control, credit. So in the general ledger, in the general ledger, there's a debtor's control. We had to put it onto the credit side, 750. Remember, that's a total. The control means total. This debtor's account credit, 750. And discount allowed debit, 750. That is the double entry. The total of cash sales, 18,000. Cash control debit, 18,000 and sales credit 18,000. The total of debtors 5,550, cash control debit and debtors control credit 5,050. When it comes to the sales, you have to take the total sales from the debtors ledger. So got there's a 5,000, Amal 1,300. The altogether your sales amount is, the credit sales amount is sales credit and data control debit 6,300. That is the total. Now, when you're looking at the creditor's ledger, the total purchase amount is 2,005. What's the double entry? Creditor control credit 2,500. Purchasers debit 2,500 as creditors control. Now let's go to the payment journal. The total of the discount received is 250. The double entry is discount received credit, creditor control debit. Discount receive credit and creditor control debit. The total of cash purchases 3,500. Double entry is purchasers debit 3,500. Cash control credit 3,500. Total amount of the creditors 2,250. Cash control credit 2250 as creditor control. Creditor control is debit 2250. The total of expense 1000. Cash control credit 1000. Then we have to check what those expenses are. Electricity and salaries. We have to open two separate T accounts. Electricity debit 500, salary is debit 500. Other column 550 that represent drawings. So cash control credit as other 550. At the same time, we had to open up a drawings account. Debit side 550. Then we have to balance all these T accounts. Now, when it comes to the debtor's ledger and the creditor's ledger, the totals are included in the debtor control and creditor control. So in any situation, if they ask you to prepare the trial balance, we are taking all the accounts in general ledger only. We are not taking debtor's ledger or the creditor ledger accounts because those balances are included in these two accounts. Remember, we are making the trial balance 
by looking at the general ledger accounts only. Thank you for watching the video. If you like, please click the like button, comment on this, share it and subscribe it.